Hi everyone, I have another great geometry problem for you. Um, this is from the 2010 Swiss IMO team selection test. Um, so around 10 years ago, and it's certainly a very elegant problem. Um, so I hope you all enjoy it. Um, so feel free to pause the video if you wish to solve it um, and see if you can figure it out. All right, so now I will go over it. Okay, so AB is the diameter of a circle. Uh, it's called K in the problem statement. And we have a tangent line at B to that circle and C and D are two points on that tangent line uh, surrounding B. So they can be any two points. So that gives the problem a good amount of flexibility. Um, then we have, um, given, given those two um, points C and D, um, we connect them both to A and, we, and they intersect the um, circle at E and F. And then we draw the line C, F, and D, E, and they intersect the circle at H and G. And we want to show that A, G, and A, H have the same length. All right. So um, when I was looking at this problem, uh, if A, H, and A, G have the same length, uh, that basically means that H and G are um, symmetric with respect to AB. So they're each the reflection of the other over AB. And so basically GH would have to be perpendicular to AB. Um, but we know CD is perpendicular to AB um, just because the tangent line is always uh, perpendicular to uh, the diameter. And so that means we want to show that HG is parallel to CD. Um, like I always say, we, we solve the geometry problem in reverse, which is what I'm doing right now, but then we write the proof going forward. Okay, so we want to show that HG is parallel to CD. Um, but if you've watched one of my um, videos before, I discussed Rhine's theorem. So basically that says... Um, if we have a quadrilateral that we know is cyclic, so in this case EHGF, we know it's cyclic. Um, if you draw, if you have another line parallel to one of the chords, so in this case CD is parallel to GH, so you draw a line parallel to one of the chords um, and it intersects um, the two cross segments, so it intersects E, G, and H, F at two other points. Um, if, since if C, D is indeed parallel to H, G, then Rhine's theorem would say that E, F, D, C is also cyclic. Um, so we're working in reverse, um, but if you can show that E, F, D, C is cyclic, then that would solve the problem. So that's my thought process behind it. Now I'm gonna write up the proof going forward. Okay, so we wanna show that EFDC is cyclic. Um, but first note that AE is perpendicular to EB um, because AB is a diameter. So basically ABC is a right triangle and, e and EB is the altitude from B to E. Now, some people might recognize this configuration and they can just tell from it that AB squared is AE times AC because it's such a common configuration in so many problems. So that's almost like just ingrained. AB squared is AE times AC. And there's a couple ways to prove this, but in case you haven't seen it before, I'm going to um, give one of the ways. Um, so we know that uh, Triangle AEB is similar to triangle ABC actually because they both have a right angle um, Like I said AE is perpendicular to EB and ABC is a right angle and then they also share this angle angle CAB they, they both share that angle and they're both right triangles. They have to be similar triangles and that means that uh, AE over AB has to be 
AB over AC. And then some very slight algebra shows AE times AC is AB squared, which is what I said in the beginning. Okay, so why are we doing that? We're trying, so we wanted to show that ECDF is cyclic, and we're trying to do it using power of a point. Um, so if we can get AE times AC, that's very good because we're, we're almost there. So AE times AC is AB squared. And by the same logic, we can show that AF times AD is AB squared. But this, this basically gives us power of a point showing EFDC is cyclic because if both these products are equal to AB squared, then they have to equal each other. And so by the converse of power of a point, CEFD is a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, and now um, basically, um, I kind of want to show the converse of Rhine's in a way. I want to show that if EFCD is cyclic and EFGH is also cyclic, which we know, then GH would have to be parallel to CD. But that's an easy angle chase. So um, it, I guess maybe it's not, it wasn't, I made it seem a little more obvious than it really is, but I kind of knew it would work out because I know the converse of Rhine is essentially true. So we have angle HGE is equal to angle HFE because they're both, they both intercept the same arc. And then angle HFE is equal to angle CFE, and that's equal to angle CDE, because we said ECDF is cyclic. Um, so this says HGE is equal to angle CDE, but that means that HG and CD have to be parallel, because these two um, angles are equal, H, HGE, CDE. Okay, so HG is parallel to CD, um, but we know we're, we're, we're almost there. So we know um, CD is perpendicular to AB, so that means HG, since it's parallel to CD, it has to also be perpendicular to AB. And you can essentially feel the symmetry now. If HG is perpendicular uh, to AB, well, anytime you have a line through the center of a, of a circle perpendicular um, to a chord, it has to bisect that chord. Um, so AB has to bisect HG. Um, and from there, it's pretty easy to see that AH has to equal AG. Um, because if you draw if you draw the line through HG and you let it intersect at a point, let's say X, um, HX equals XG, and then you have AX um, is AX. So it's, it's very easy to show that AH has to equal AG from there by symmetry. Um, so I hope you all uh, enjoy this problem as always, um, and uh, if you liked it, uh, please give, a, give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks everyone.